my viewers and subscribers welcome back to another tutorial now for today's lesson we'll be looking at for loop and we'll be also discussing cumulative total all right so with that being said let's begin now this is a repetition control structure and this allows you to efficiently write a loop that needs to execute a specific number of times. So that therefore means we'll know the start value and most times we'll know the end value. So we basically will know how many times this loop needs to be executed. All right. Now the same for loop is that we have the for, then we have the variable name, which would be the counter, then you will have the start value and the end value and in between that now we have the statements and then the termination of the loop which is n for all right but first before we examine some questions we need to first understand cumulative total because we'll need to use that when you're finding totals and averages and different kind of calculations all right so let's get into that Now this is used to find a new total. So you have a current total and you want to find a new total. Now the syntax for this is cumulative total equal cumulative total plus variable. So we'll need to initialize a cumulative total variable at the start of the algorithm when you're answering these questions. So just look at this example. So passenger passed a station. So we're going to read the number of passengers passed and add it to the total number of passengers. So the first thing that we'll need to do is to initialize the cumulative total variable. And in this case, we'll use total passenger to store this cumulative total, all right? Then after that, we'll read in the number of passengers. So this variable here will be two. I'm storing the number of passengers that will be passed in the station. So afterwards, we apply the cumulative total formula. So that therefore means we'll have total passengers equal total passengers plus passengers. So cumulative total equal cumulative total plus variable. All right, so this will be storing our total passengers and this variable will be storing our number of passengers that will be passed in the station. After that, we'll just print the results so the total passenger is. And remember, guys, this will be storing the total passengers. So we'll print this information here. So on this screen, you'll have total passenger is whatever figure is there or whatever figure is stored in the variable will be printed along with that message on the screen. So for example, the total passenger is 100 or the total passengers are 200. Alright, so now we're going to look at some for loop question. So this question requires us to write a pseudocode algorithm that reads 200 numbers and find their total. Alright, so the first thing that we'll need to do is to initialize cumulative total variable because we'll be using it here to store the total for the 200 numbers because it would be impractical for us to initialize um, I mean, 200 variables store all of these numbers. So you have num1, num2, num3, num4, num5. That would be impractical. So we use cumulative total here to find the total of all of these 200 numbers. So the next thing that we're going to do is to write our for loop. So the, num, no, the variable numbers there would be used to store the count. So you have numbers equal 1 to 200. Do. So we'll ask the user to enter the numbers. We'll accept the numbers and then we'll find the total. So you'll have total equal total plus numbers. So remember guys, cumulative total equal cumulative total plus variable. Alright, so total here will be stored the total of the 200 numbers. Afterwards, we'll end the for loop and then we'll print the results. So that will be the total number is and then we'll print the variable total. This it will be storing the total of all the 200 numbers.
All right, so again, the first thing that we'll need to do is to initialize our cumulative total variable. And in this case, we're going to use product. Then we have our for loop, and numbers there will be stored to count. And that therefore means that this loop will execute 50 times. All right, so it'll loop over 50 times. Afterwards, we'll ask the users to enter the numbers, and then we'll accept the numbers from the users. Afterwards, we made a modification now to the cumulative total formula to find the product. Now, how are we going to do this? So, you'll have product equal product asterisk numbers. So, because we're not finding total here and finding the product, we'll make modifications to the cumulative total and change it from the plus sign to the asterisk to multiply these numbers. So, afterwards, we'll end the for loop and then we'll print. Our result so the product is and the variable here will be stored product all right now thank you for watching for the next tutorial we'll be looking at while loops and also repeat until loops and we'll be also looking at counting how counting is used in those loops as well and also with for other for loops questions so stay tuned for the other tutorials and thanks for watching again guys